Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, will you please sit still? I'm being still, Mama. All I'm doing is straightening out the pictures on the wall. Why must you? Because they're crooked. But why must you this minute? Because I just noticed. The pictures hanging crooked make me nervous. Well, you're making me nervous. David distinctly asked me to come over here and keep you quiet. I thought at the time he was asking the impossible. Now I'm sure of it. Mama, there is nothing the matter with me anymore. As a matter of fact, there never was. There might have been. I can't remain in a chair the rest of my life because there might have been something the matter with me that there isn't. If it weren't that I'm counting on a grandson, I'd let you walk tightrope across Niagara Falls. (laughs) But with only five months left to go, you're going to take care of yourself. Mama, this is Wednesday, Monday. I had a little dizziness. You had more than a little dizziness. You had a bad fall. Look at your knees and your elbow and that bump on your forehead. You're just lucky you have a husband whose nerves are as strong as iron, but he'd given up long ago. Long ago, we didn't even know each other. Why, that really seems long ago. There you go again, not making sense. I'm starting to feel that there never was any time before I knew David. I remember very well, too well when there was. I can't even imagine any more what it would be like without David. But if this past hour is any example, I don't want to imagine. Seriously, Mama. Is it going to get more and more like this all the time? I suppose so. I hope so. I never knew there would be a man like David. Except he isn't just another person anymore. He's a, a bigger part of me than I am myself. I could never be without him again. Not for one day. That's the way you should feel, dear. But always with the thought that someday you might be. I don't want any such thought. Why should I? David and I aren't ever going to be apart. Is that? That's what I said once. But things turned out differently. You know, Mama, till I was married to David, I never even imagined what it was like for you. Now I don't want to. Let's not have any of your sympathy, Mrs. Norton. You and I, we managed fine. As a matter of fact, you were such a handful, I would have had time for anybody else, not even a cat. Say, where is Shakespeare? I haven't seen him in hours. Wherever he is, let him be. But he might need me. He might have fallen in the bathtub. If he has, good. It might give him some practical ideas. But he won't be able to get out. The sides are like ice and he'll catch cold. Mama, you wouldn't want that to happen. All right. All right. You're breaking my heart. I'll go and see what that cat's up to. Thanks. But if he's sound asleep and nothing's happened to him, I'll never forgive him. It's David. I'll answer. You don't have to ring again. Here I am. Made it. Almost. Hello, David. How do you suppose I knew it was you? By the ring, of course. Oh, it was a nice Tweedy ring. (laughs) Mama? Oh, Mama's in the bathtub with Shakespeare. How would I know what she's doing there? Oh, here's Mama now. Mama, it's David. Where was Shakespeare? Asleep in the sun on David's bed. Hello, David. Yes, darling, I'll be good. When will you be home? In a little while. Oh, that's wonderful. I miss you. I miss you terribly. Say, bring home a half pint of cream. What's that? Yep, I'll hold on. Doesn't that husband of yours have anything more important to do than talk to you on the phone? What is more important, Mama? Roger just came in. David had a message for him. I'm holding on while he talks to you. Uh, Roger. Roger, don't go away. I'm I'm calling Carrington, and I'd like you to be here. Fine. How's Claudia? She's on the phone now. I'm just saying goodbye to her. Oh, give her my regards. Hello, darling. Sorry to keep you waiting. Roger sends his love. That's even better than regards. Fine. Now, take it easy. Try and act like the kind of person you aren't. (laughs) Yeah. 
Uh, give my love to Bluff and hello to Shakespeare. Bye. You never run out of conversation, you two. With Claudia, all I run out of is breath. <laughs> uh, Lottie, please get Carrington on the phone. It's a good sign when two people have so much to say to each other. My wife and I, we used to stare at each other from down a long dinner table. They were the most quiet meals. Where is she now, Roger? As a matter of fact, my eldest son has informed me that she's due in New York tomorrow. We'll have one of those dinners tomorrow night, no doubt. Oh, it'll probably be a lot better than you expect. I don't expect anything anymore, David. But tell me, is Claudia still excited about the farm? Oh, and impatient. Roger, do deeds always take so long now, to turn up? Now, don't you start getting worried. The place is as good as yours. Oh, David, it's going to be a good life for you and Claudia on the farm. Makes me very glad for you. And very sad for the rest of us. And that must be Carrington now. Hello. Well, hello, Mr. Carrington. Yes, this is Norton. I'm fine, and you? Good. Good. Oh, you got them, and... Hmm? Are the estimates all right? You want to form a corporation to finance and administer. That's what I expected him to do all along. You've got a committee already. Fine. Meetings tomorrow evening and Friday in Chicago. He certainly moves when he moves. I see. And you'd like me to make the presentation. Well, of course, Mr. Killian and I have been planning to come out to Chicago. We want to see the site firsthand and discuss matters further with you. Tomorrow, eh? Yes, I can see it's pretty important for one of us to be there. Of course. Well, either Mr. Killian or I will call you as soon as we land in Chicago. Fine. Very kind of you, Mr. Carrington, but I think a hotel might be simpler. Right. Goodbye. Well, you heard it. He's really underway. It's great, isn't it? I still can't believe it. So one of us must be in Chicago tomorrow. It's a pretty important meeting. And it's important that you go. Oh, but I don't want to go. It's your brainchild, David. You must go. Oh, Roger, I, I don't go in for that sort of thing. Board meetings and dinners and stuff, but that's the part of architecture I prefer to omit. You can't omit it. It's very important and sometimes just as exciting as it can be dull. Tomorrow it should be exciting. Then why don't you go? Remember, my wife in New York, first time in seven months, family dinner. David, I can't go. Much as I'd like to. Mm, that means... That I, I know... You've never spent a night apart from Claudia since you've been married. I'm sorry, but... No, oh, don't be silly. We're an old married couple now. Somehow I don't think Claudia thinks so. David, is that you? No, another. Oh, David, I missed you so feel as if we'd gotten married yesterday. How do you feel otherwise? Perfect now. And I was disgustingly good all day. I didn't move out of the house. How's Mama? In the kitchen preparing supper. She won't let me help. David, your arms are full of things. Oh, so they are. What do you know? David, are they for me? You're a greedy little girl. Well, are they? <laughs> well, there's a half a pint of heavy cream you wanted. Oh, who cares about that? What else? Hey, you can't stand around holding things all night. Can't I? All right. First, something for you. For me, David, how nice of you. It's a surprise. Roses. Yellow roses. How beautiful. I like the yellow ones best. So do I. But, David, I'm not sick anymore. Tomorrow I can go out, Dr. Williams said. Oh, you don't have to be in bed for me to bring my wife flowers. David, they're so beautiful, I thought they deserved a good reason. They have a good reason. I uh, love you. And I always will. David, listen, tomorrow night there's a Mickey Mouse at the corner theater. Can we go? Uh, here's a, another box for you. <gasps> another one for me. You sure this isn't for Bluff? You're his keeper. Go on, open it. can't imagine what it is. Oh, David, chocolate-covered cherries. <laughs> oh, I love them. Can I eat one now? Why not? I'll have one, too. Mmm. Oh, how delicious. Oh, I'll never be able to stop eating them. Mmm. 
David, what about the Mickey Mouse tomorrow night? I think it's what I haven't seen. Uh, here is the last package, and it's for Shakespeare. Not for me? Well, he won't mind if you open it. Oh. Oh, I love getting presents. Is that horrible of me? Disgraceful. Especially when there's no special, I mean, no particular reason for getting them. David, it's a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> as big as the dining room table. That's enormous. I'll never do it. Sure you will. Take you exactly two days. If I stay home all day and we stay home every evening, I'll get just one corner finished. <laughs> oh, David, you're sweet. I'll be fed and busied for days. And the roses are beautiful. Why'd you bring them? I love you, I told you. Did you love me other nights, too? Well, certainly, but... I know, darling. Tonight especially. You didn't have to bring me presents, but I'm glad you did. Then... Then you know. I know everything I have to know. Whew. That's a relief. David, what about the Mickey Mouse tomorrow night to celebrate our being in love? Uh-oh. Then you don't know. Know what? Honestly, you're mysterious and exciting tonight. <laughs> you go to that Mickey Mouse, darling, with uh, Mama. David, are you going to be busy tomorrow night? Yes, darling, I am. Oh. Well, it can't be helped, I suppose. We'll wait for Mickey Mouse till Friday. I'll still love you on Friday. But I... Claudia. I have to go to Chicago on business. Overnight? Over two nights. You have to go? You don't think I want to go, do you? Then don't. Let Roger go. He can't. His wife's coming into town. Your wife is in town. Oh, David, can't you go and come back and not spend the night? I'll wait up for you if you do. Darling, I'm going to Chicago, not Brooklyn. It's so sudden. I know. I'm going to feel like a bachelor, only worse. Would you like to stay at Mother's? No, I'd rather be where you might be, David, if you were there. If you know what I mean. Darling, will you take it easy? Not run around? Let the elevator man take bluff for his walk? Please don't clean my pipes. Go mm -hmm. see Mickey Mouse and get lots of sleep, will you? Oh, David, hold me tight. <sighs> That's nice. What's nice? Going away makes our being in love so exciting. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. If you worked in a factory or an office, you'd be able to step over to that familiar red cooler for a bottle of refreshing ice-cold Coca-Cola during work hours. Housework is even more trying than outside jobs oftentimes, so why not help yourself to work refreshed? All you have to do is to keep plenty of Coke in the refrigerator. Then, when you need refreshment, pause, drink, and relax. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs> ¶¶